And that has nothing to do with the teaching of Haile Selassie. You see what I'm saying? So all of these, all of these untruths have to be opposed. All these untruths have to be ex- exposed in order to be opposed. And what a lot of these folks that try to beat up online in your society but target I, what a lot of them don't like is the fact that we're bringing that truth to bear and people are beginning, it's taking them out of their comfortable position. You see what I'm saying? Because see, some of the, see, the, the fulfilled Rastafari people, they thought that, well, they said Jesus Christ or Jesus Christos, and then line of Jew society says Jesus Christos or Jesus Christ, and we have a Christ-based perspective to Rastafari, so they felt that, well, we're, we're both the same thing. You understand? We're coming from the same perspective, and that's all you have to have. Because Halasasa said Jesus, therefore we say Jesus, and everything is cool with that. Because these other Rastafari don't say Jesus Christ and the whole white thing and blah, blah, blah. You see what I'm saying? That's the depths of fulfilled Rastafari. I can tell you that right there. And you know what I'm saying, brethren? They never mention the divinity of the emperor. Never. Of course, because they don't understand, they don't understand true Christianity. They don't understand the true teaching of Christ, the true testimony of Christ. Because Christ says that if if you are in my word, right, and my word is in you, you dwell in my word, you live in it, and my word live in you. He said that he will dwell with us, right? He said he would dwell with us and in us individually and collectively. You understand? And the Father and him will dwell with us and we all will be what we all will be one notice that that's tawahido tawahido means oneness that's ahadu like we say ahadu amlak like the, like the jews say ahad so it all comes down to that and the muslims say tawhid it all comes down to that oneness again but see that right there is that divinity that each of us have the divinity is what man was created in divinity man fell what man fell from was the divinity of God and in God. You see what I'm saying? And what Christ restores to man, to man who will submit himself to his process, he restores that life, he restores that divinity, he blots out that error, that error program, and the old things, and, and he reboots our system. You understand? And so, so, the, so the divinity of his imperial majesty is not limited to just his majesty in Christ, you see what I'm saying? But what the priests in the church have taken away from the people, even in the Ethiopian church, it has become just like the Roman church. The same thing that crept into the Roman church and other churches over time eventually crept into Ethiopia. And after 1974, 75, it was on. It was on. So what we have to this very day and time is this subtle, and it's so subtle, this subtle degeneration. You understand of the true faith, and how do we know it? Whenever you put anything between that salvation of the the believer, the seeker in God through Christ and through the Word of God, the Bible, the Bible, and the Bible alone, because that's the not alone, but but I'll say the Bible primarily is the foundation. Apocryphal books, um, writings of saints, liturgies, all come second. All come second to that testimony. The first testimony that we have of Christ is the Bible. And before the New Testament testimony, his direct speaking, his direct uh, witness, we have the Old Testament prophets. In fact, the whole Bible is witnessing of Christ. But the churches, if you notice something very, very subtly about many churches, not all churches, but a lot of churches don't do that. A lot of churches put fun and games and songs and dance and, and different programs on debt reduction, weight loss, and other... Uh, what are you telling me, Ross, about... Remember I posted something about the Ethiopian church, and you mentioned something to me about the church. Oh, it was so long ago. It was on YouTube, but I wish I had it. Remember talking about the church? I remember. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we talk about the church, I would say, quite regularly because Revelation talks about the churches. Revelation talks about all the church. And, and you know what will best explain this to you if you get a chance to go to Revelation again and go to what, which church was it? Laodicea. I think it's in the third chapter of Revelation. And go read through that particular church. And then when you look at each of those seven churches those seven churches are the ages since the first church in the upper room the so-called first official church in the upper room to 
the present time. It talks about the different ages. You know, like the Protestant Reformation yeah, was the right. age, the Middle Ages. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? The Apostolic, the Apostolic Age. There are seven distinct ages of the church. When you see the seven ch churches in Revelation, it's not just speaking just to the seven churches. That there were seven yeah, churches on the. Well, he was speaking to those seven churches then. In every time, remember, there's things that are to come to pass, it's things that are happening, and there's things that will happen. So, remember, the time frame is not just in our present moment. Some of these things have already happened. You see what I'm saying? And some of these things are happening right now, if we have eyes that can see it, and then there's some things that are to happen. So, in the overall view, those seven churches are speaking about the seven different ages of professed Christianity. So when you look at that, we're now in that Laodicean period, which is the last, the end time church, is that Lyo, that Laodicean church. And there's somebody on the internet, I want you to do this search, because I know you be Googling, right? You be doing the Google, right? Okay, write down this guy's name. His name is um, Walter. Walter. Oh, since he's a German, I should really say Walter. But anyway, Walter Viet. I think his name is spelled V E I T H. T H. Yeah, and -E yeah, Walter Viet, and she, he does these amazing prophecies. He has this amazing prophecies. He he was a like a, a scientist or like a scientist or something like that, and he had I, I think he's a, a Seventh Day Adventist is the particular denomination he's about, but he became like born again and started to look at the Bible from that like scientific perspective. And he became, uh, as they say, a believer. And so he does these, these different speaking tours on different subject matters. And look up the, I think he has a video, the seven churches of Revelation, seven churches of Revelation. Yeah, yeah, if you can. I know some of his videos are on, um, no, no, no. Well, well YouTube, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have like the short ones and some of the longer ones on YouTube. Some very good ones. He even one even on the Catholic Islamic connection, which is very interesting. A lot of his videos are good because he does like a lecture. So what he does is he give you like a lot of history. You understand? A lot of the history, and he also does a lot of like secret society. New, but from a from a from a, from, from a biblical perspective. And most of what he gives you is facts. Yeah, he gives you his own interpretation of the facts. But irregardless, he gives you some facts that then you can now go and check out. Yeah, but he goes much deeper because his solution at least points us to the word of God. See, a lot of these other ones like the Alex Jones. You know, I called him yesterday. You called Alex Jones? And that has nothing to do with the teaching of Hala Selassie. Yes. Yes. You see what I'm saying?